All right. I'm going to make a video for some of the people that are being misinformed about one, changing your strings, and two, uh, keeping up on your guitar. It seems people have gotten a weird skew for how you're supposed to do things, but <clears throat> I've pretty much been in wood shops and been doing um, woodworking, all sorts of different things, pretty much my entire life. And uh, so not just guitars, I know different woods very well and what, what they need and what makes them do what and, you know, what they're good for, basically. So first off, you always, always, and I don't give a shit what anyone says, you need to at least loosen the strings before you cut them or take them off whatever like but if you're going to cut them if those strings are at full tension okay this neck has got a bow in it because of the pressure there's there's many pounds of pressure on the neck from the strings if you you know immediately cut that tension you're gonna have things like slap back where it can you know tear your bridge up it can warp your neck. You can have all different sorts of different problems from that. You don't want to do that. You want to loosen them at least. And um, then you move the uh, bridge pins. I just, these are um, brass bridge pins. Oops. <laughs> they're, uh, they're a little spendy, but. They make it sound really good, and it gives it a little bit more sustain. Uh, so, let me get these off real quick. Just throw them down. Make sure you keep track of where your strings are at and stuff. You can lose them. All right. Now here we get to the point of what I really want to talk about. Is uh, keeping up on your guitar. And one thing, especially with acoustics, well, basically with acoustics, <laughs> um, the the body itself, this wood, the back, this needs to have moisture. It, it, don't, if people tell you that it need, you know, the wood needs to be dry, that's wrong. If the, dry, the wood gets dry, it will start cracking, you know, it'll start cracking up the lacquer and stuff that's on the guitar. You'll get splits in the wood, stuff can start coming up, all different kinds of things. So, there's um, devices where you can get these little sponge type things and you put it in, in the guitar hole, set it in the guitar hole and let it just, they kind of just create vapors inside the guitar that, you know, um, moisturize it. Um, you leave it on there for a couple days. Uh, I'm sure you can find them anywhere like Musician's Friend or some, you know, shit like that. But they're pretty cool. That That will help a lot. Obviously, if you have a humidifier or something, yeah, good for you, but most of us don't, so this is one way to do it. Um, fretboard. Rosewood fretboards. People always complain about rosewood fretboards. Oh my god, they, you know, they come up with so much gunk. This and that. Not if you know how to use and take care of a f rosewood fretboard. Notice mine never have anything on them. Nothing. There's no grease, nothing, anything. And why that is, is no, you do not clean your neck with water. <laughs> what water's going to do is, you know, it's going to go into the wood, great. But what water does is it actually will dry out the wood worse. 
woods have natural oils to them and they need to be replenished with oils and this is a fact <laughs> this is just a uh, woodworking 101 it, it this is what they take so for me and I'm kind of an odd duck on this because a lot of people will use other stuff linseed oil no I would not never use that that's too just too much and uh, it's too much of a heavy oil and it really, really penetrates the wood a little too much. You just want to kind of moisturize it as well as you can. But what I use um, at very first, you know, when you get a new acoustic, you know, nothing's really been done to it that much. You know, it hasn't really been like this used to be a really light color before I um, did what I do and, you know, moisturize the wood and stuff. It makes it nice and smooth. It keeps dirt from, you know, really getting up into it because the oils kind of repel it and it just kind of wipes away, um, you know, darkens it, everything. It's just, it's just way better for the wood. What I always use is extra virgin olive oil. Now it sounds weird, but trust me, it works awesome, especially with rosewood fretboards. It works amazing with these. Really brings the wood to life. And it, uh it lasts quite a while like your fretboard don't get dry for a long time um, in between every string change I use some of this and this is fretboard conditioner and this is Big Ben's trust me this is not a fucking <laughs> you know product placement or anything I don't get paid for any of this shit none of these people even know who the fuck I am so um, I use the Big Ben's fretboard juice you know, it's fretboard conditioner. I have it actually mixed with some of, oh, where is it? Um, I can't seem to find the bottle. Well, it's one of these deals. This is... This is polish. I don't use this on acoustics or anything. I use this sometimes just on my other, you know, electric guitars. But it, it's this um, Gibson brand, Luthier's Choice, uh, and it's a fretboard conditioner. It's in, it's on, got green on the front, and they uh, they don't penetrate as hard as like you know the olive oil, you know, or something else in the oil family. This is a um, petroleum distillate or this both of them are um, a form of petroleum distillates and they have their own natural oils to them and they're the oils that the fret especially fretboard wood needs to be moisturized you don't want a fretboard that you're gonna be you know doing vibratos or doing core changes and stuff and you're having friction because the fretboard is dry and and kind of cracky and you know, it just doesn't feel good. This makes some of those, you know, a lot of those pores that are in uh, in uh, rosewood fretboards, they kind of close up. They kind of fill up and they just, it becomes really smooth and it smooths itself out over time too because the natural oils from your fingers combined with the oils that you've put into the woods and then doing this in between, you know, um, this is basically just to kind of replenish it again, and it cleans very well. Like, this cleans your fretboard very, very well. Again, don't just use water. That's get, just going to dry shit out. But, uh... <clears throat> yeah, that's that's what I do. And then, um... You know, be, because I work on guitars and stuff, I'll always go through and, you know, feel the frets and see how they look and sometimes I'll give them a dressing and um, you know crown some of the edges and stuff and then polish them up you know I like to keep my my necks and fretboards and stuff very clean and tidy so um, that's another thing I do I also use um, it's called Big Ben's nut sauce <laughs> and um, it uh, it really um, it it really helps with the strings 
coming through the nut. Like it, it, it lubricates it well, very well. Doesn't deaden your strings or anything. Doesn't eat away at the nut. It's just, it works very well. Um, it's kind of a, I don't know what mixture it is. It's another trolling, petroleum, you know, kind of more of a gel sort of deal. Like a Vaseline, you know, mixed with like graphite or something, you know. So, yeah, and that's what I do with that. And then there's this, this stuff I've always found is really good for acoustics. This is what I, this is what I spray on the outside to clean it up. It's just this Martin, you know, it says guitar polish, but it's got... It's not the same as most guitar polish. It's not the, uh, it doesn't have all the chemicals and harsh, harsh stuff in it like, like something like this would, like a high gloss polish or something, you know? This is just more of a cleaning product and it's made specifically for acoustics. And it, you know, it kind of smells good. It has a wood, woody smell to it itself. And it really just, you know, helps the wood and it kind of, well, it definitely cleans the wood, but um, I don't know. It just gives a little something that makes it nicer. And I, you know, I'll do that every once in a while because I'm rough on my guitars and stuff. So I'll have a bunch of shit all over them, and I'll go through and you know spray that through it and buff it out, and it's nice and smooth. And um, I sanded this not too long ago, and because I hate, well, mo usually hate gloss finishes on acoustics I, I think it just takes away from the look of the wood and that thicker uh you know layer of shit i i find you know hides the sound of the wood a little bit more but um i also sand the back of my necks um this one isn't really sanded i just kind of like rough it up with a scotch pad to get it nice and satin see it's not gloss and it just, it, it's smoother, and it's easier to work with, and play on, and it just works. So, yeah, I wanted to clear some of this stuff up, like, so I've heard a lot of different stupid shit on the internet about what people say you're supposed to do, or what you should do, or what they think you should do. Um, coming from a woodworking standpoint, this is what you need to do. This is, I mean, it's just... It, it's the nature of the beast. It's what it's what needs to be done. Um, if you want your guitar working optimally, because no rosewood is not the shittiest, you know, kind of fretboard wood. It actually is amazing wood. <laughs> it's a lot of characteristics, and it feels very very good if you know how to keep up on it. So. Um, I'm going to change the strings on this bad boy, and I'm going to, well, first I'm going to, uh, you know, polish up the fretboard and, you know, check out the frets and do all that fun stuff, and then I'm going to um, put some new strings on this and hopefully get it playing all right. Um, I just had some strings, I, they're the uh, newer Ernie Ball Everlast strings. I don't know if they're coated or not. I think they're coated or treated or something with something to make them last longer. They do last a bit longer than just your natural, you know. I don't play with phosphor bronze. I play with 8020. I just think it's brighter and it sounds better and it looks prettier. <laughs> but uh yeah, I, that's just what I play with, but um they have this Everlast shit and it, you know, it lasted all right, but just like, uh, you know, a lot of other strings, I end up, you end up getting really bad, um, like black, black soot from the, you know, the strings themselves. And I think that is somewhat of a care, you know, not really, because I get that on phosphor bronze too. Um, but I think it's just something about bronze or something, because... I don't really get that on my electrics, but the, like my acoustics, I always get this, these black lines from where you, you know, do your fingering and stuff and <laughs> fingering, but, um, yeah. So I just want to talk about, a, you know, a little bit of this stuff, make another video for you guys, show you guys something. 
Um, I, you know, I was just about to start working on this anyway, and I was like, oh, you know what? This would be a good time to say something, because I watched a couple videos recently of some other people telling you some... One of them is he who shall not be named. <laughs> Making a video saying some horrendously wrong bullshit. And we're going to come and tell you what you need to do. And really, I mean, to anyone that's going to try to come and like bitch on my page, it's it's not debatable. It's just it's just what you need to do. Like, if you don't like what I have to say, just go somewhere else. Don't bitch to me about it. It's just retarded. This is this is the way I've been doing it for a long time, and people definitely know who the hell I am because of at least around here because of the work I do on guitars. Like I've been doing it for a really long time. I started on my own, just kind of doing it for a couple bucks and shit. Recently, I <laughs> I done so many guitars that I don't really have any more people to, you know, help out, fix up their guitars, because the, the town I live in is not very huge, like, you know, it's, it's substantial, but there's not a shitload of musicians, so, or ones that, you know, would ever give a shit to actually, you know, keep their stuff nice, a lot of people just don't care, and just take it and bash it up, and don't give a shit, but, um, I think, Guitar upkeep is a very essential part of playing guitar and having guitars and owning guitars. and So, it's one thing that you need to keep up on. Also, yeah, I, I don't know if I mentioned, you you sh um, put the, you can use the, uh, uh, the olive oil on the bridge too. And that, I mean, believe me, not a lot of people ever really touch the bridge. It's usually, you know, fretboards and stuff like that. Do that to the bridge, and trust me, wipe off all the excess. Don't just, like, wipe it on there and let it sit to soak in. You just put it on there, and you, you know, you rub it into the fretboard or whatever, or into this, and just work it in, and then, you know, get the dry part of the towel, and then wipe it out. You don't want to just sit it, set it there, because it's going to soak in pretty quick, and you don't want to saturate the wood. That's nothing you want to do, so you just want to restore some of those natural oils that would be in the wood if it, you know, if it were still alive. So. Um, thanks for watching. Subscribe. You know, say what's up. Ask questions. Um, I I like to do these videos for you guys and you know show you stuff. So let me know if there's anything um, anyone really wants. To know or wants my input on, and uh, we'll see if I can help you out. All right, keep rocking.